Christ the Lord It's good. 
he's acquainted with our grief. The man of sorrow, son of suffering. Oh, blood and tears, how can it be? There's a God who weeps. There's a God who bleeds. Oh, praise the one who would reach for me. Oh, hallelujah to the Son of suffering. distant and removed but you chased us down in merciful pursuit to the sinner you were grace and the broken you embrace and in the end the proof is in you in the end the proof is in you God who bleeds, oh praise the one who would reach for me, oh hallelujah to the Son of suffering. This is good news. cross is my freedom, your stripes are my healing, all praise King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood is still speaking, your love is still reaching, all praise King Jesus, glory to God forever, your cross is my freedom, your stripes of my healing, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God for heaven, your prayer is still speaking, your love is still reaching, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God forever.
sem Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 
first loved me I echo back this love to you I give you everything because you first loved me Jesus I love you I love you I love you and Jesus I love
since you first loved me. Thank you, Jesus, the light of the world, the greatest gift that we could ever receive is Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you came. You know, this, this morning as we were praying as a, a staff team, I, I had a word from, from the Lord that I, I feel a, a promise over this morning. 
And I, I felt this sense that, you know, we can be coming towards the end of what for some has been a challenging year and feel like I just can't wait for 2022 to start. But I heard the Lord say that I'm actually, I, I'm actually the God of the suddenly moments and that there were some of you that received promises over 2021 and they hadn't happened yet. Some of you have got prophetic words this year and you haven't seen them come to pass. And I felt the Lord say, I'm the God of the suddenly and I'm not a God that is late and I'm actually the God of breakthrough. And I kept thinking and worship of these, these radical moments that I've been a part of that I'd seen happen. I felt the Lord say, I'm gonna come in, in radical moments this morning. And I kept thinking of James 5 where there's so much beauty in getting to pray for one another. And in James 5, 16, it says, the, the effective and fervent prayers of the righteous man avails much. And I felt the Lord say that you're surrounded by righteous men and women this morning. And that as they join their prayer to the promise that you've been holding on to, some of you haven't shared it with someone. Some of you, it was just the word you felt over 2021. And you're like, God, it feels like the opposite. I'm like, he's, he's the God of the suddenly moments. And He's not done yet. He's not done yet. We're not done. And today is a day of breakthrough. And so what I'd love for you to do is I'd love you to take a second and think, is there a promise that I had over 2021? Is there a prophetic word that I received? Is there something as I was praying about this year that I had a sense of? I specifically felt some of you, um, I felt someone had a, a word about their son coming back to the Lord or returning home and being restored. And I actually um, heard the word Todd and I heard the Lord say, call Todd home. And I feel like there's somebody that you've been believing for, for a son to be returned home. And then there's something about calling Todd home. Thank you, Jesus. For some of you, it might be financial provision that God said that, that something was gonna happen for you. I actually felt specifically in terms of investments this year. And I just heard him say, I'm not done yet kept thinking of testimonies of people finding money in their pockets that wasn't there. We say finding money in the, in the, in the offering reading. It's not just a nice thing. It's actually the Lord. The Lord is really kind. The Lord can do radical things. For some of you, it's that you've had sickness in your body and God gave you a word health over the year and you haven't seen it come to pass. Well, He's the greatest gift. He's the God of the breakthrough and He's the God of the suddenly moments. So if you have one of those things, would you go ahead and put your hand up for me? And just keep your hand up nice and high. Thank you, Jesus. Keep your head. If you have a word, a promise, something even that you've just been believing for, and I would love for us to find these people. And if you could just share with the person in one word, maximum two words, what is it? You can just say health. You can say provision. You, I felt like the Lord was breaking somebody out of a prison of grief. It feels like you're in grief that will never go away. And the Lord said, I'm breaking you out of what you feel like is a prison of grief, where you feel like I'll never move past this thing. Thank you, Jesus. And I want you to pray believing that the, the effective and fervent prayers of the righteous will avail much in their life. I want you to start praying for the suddenlies of heaven over them. Thank you, Father, for the breakthrough. God, that Your Word will not return void. Father, we speak breakthrough over them. The promise You spoke over them, that You're a man that is true to Your Word, God. Start speaking over them. You're a man that's true to their Word. Thank You, Jesus. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Promises fulfilled. Jesus. We call the promise to today. If you're watching on Bethel TV, I saw you making, writing down the declaration that he's not, he's not done yet. He's not a God that is late. I want you just to write down the promise that you had and believe over it. Share it with somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Can we just give Jesus praise for who He is, but also in advance for the breakthroughs that we're about to see. We've just prayed for God. We give You praise in advance for the breakthroughs we've just prayed for, believing that they're gonna avail much. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. If you wanna give someone a hug as you go back to your seat, can we just thank the worship team? That was beautiful. Thank you, guys.
Amen. Amen. Can we just thank the worship team one more time? So grateful. Edward, um, he said something earlier in one of the songs. I think it was something like, um, God, your love echoes back. And I was like, did, did he just say that? Just poetry, spontaneous. I'm just so grateful that we're at this church in this season and this time. We are in the right place at the right time. And I'm, I'm so excited that I get to do offering this morning. Um, as we get ready for our offering, reading number one, um, and the ushers are getting ready and everybody's grabbing their phones, purses, walk, wallets, pocketbooks, all of those things, um, and you online as well. I, I just wanted to share something. Christmas was yesterday. Everybody had a good Christmas? It's good. Gifts and surprises and Jesus, 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 my son, um, he is four years old. I have two boys, but one of them is four. For us parents with, with younger kids right now, Christmas is um, probably one of the scariest days for us because we don't know what we're going to get on the other side of that kid opening that gift. Um, it's going to be really excited or like really disappointment, and then your heart is just torn into two. It's happened. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and we teach our kids gratefulness is beautiful. Uh, but there... One of the things that uh, we get the privilege of teaching our kids is in a world of Santa Claus running around, we get to tell them the meaning of Christmas. And, and, and I love that we get to have that honor um, to tell them what this, that day, this day is about. Um, it's also my birthday on Christmas as well. So that's a fun fact. Jesus chose that I would be born on the day that he celebrated. Just saying. I'm just saying. I might be his favorite. I'm just saying. But there, there's... You know, I'm talking to my son, and sometimes I tell him stories or different realities, but the way he interprets them is completely different. And so um, there, the other day, someone was um, going to take a gift, and they said something about Santa, and they were walking away, and he said, he's dead. I was like, oh, wait a minute, son, you can't just scream out Santa's dead. But the, the story was I told him about the, a guy named St. Nick, where it was a true story, it was in the village and giving toys and things like that. And I told him about St. Nick and, and I said, well, that was a long time ago. So, you know, he, he's, he's dead, like he died a long time ago. And my son's asking, like, how did he die? I'm like, son, son he's just, he's gone. But his interpretation is that Santa's dead. Santa's dead. And my other reason for telling him is also because um, I get to get the credit. I don't want Santa getting the credit for the gifts that I bought. Anyways, um, I want everyone to stand up in this place. I want you guys to stand up. We're going to read offering number one. But I, I love, I love in Matthew 6, it, it talks about Jesus is talking and he says, look at the birds of the air and look at the, the lilies. Does the Father not clothe them? Does he not provide? How much more will he provide for us? And, and I just want to remind us that Jesus redefined our relationship with money. Jesus redefined how we actually get to relate to money, that money is not my provision, that he is. He's the one who clothes me and covers me. And so some of us might need to have a DTR with our money today. And that might mean you're putting a little bit more in or a little less or whatever that is for you. Um, we're going to read this with faith. Amen? As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for... Jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interests and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, as the ushers are moving throughout, Leslie is going to come on up. My, my spiritual mom, love her so much. So grateful. So good. Well... Give, can we give Dante a hand? That was beautiful. Yes, he is our son. We love him very much. He looks 
just like his dad. But uh, so, guys. I am so excited to welcome our first time guest. If you are here visiting Bethel over this beautiful Christmas weekend, will you please raise your hand? We won't embarrass you. We just want to acknowledge you all. Oh, thank you for being here with us. If you're here for the very first time, we pray that there's such refreshing and blessing released over your family. Keep your hand raised. Our ushers have something they'd love to give to you. Uh, you won't be able to put it in the offering, but that's okay. We will figure that out. So go ahead and, and drop it off in the lobby. We'd love to connect with you and bless you. Uh, even love to pray with you at the end of this service. Uh, get a chance to receive some prayer. So welcome, Bethel Church. Welcome our first-time guests. Maybe you're joining us for the first time online. Welcome our online church. Welcome online. We love our online church as well. Uh, also, we have some church news through so go ahead and turn our attention. And we have no 6 p.m. prayer service tonight. Um, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's watch this church news. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Happy day after Christmas. Day after. We love that you're in church on the day after Christmas. It's Indeed. beautiful. And uh, Chris is still in his pajamas from the waist down. I don't yeah. know if you can see that yet. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. still have that Christmas vibe going. We're, we're living it. Here's some church news for you. Well, we have been so appreciative of how generous you've been and your yes. tithes and offerings and your giving. And we finished the year really strong. Just as a reminder, as we head to the end of the year, if you have any additional giving to do, if we mm -hmm. receive it or it's postmarked by December 31st, then it'll be reflected in this year's giving statement. So yeah. that would bless you and us. Yeah. If you're interested in learning more about healing, miracles, and how to get words of knowledge, and how to enter into something like signs and wonders, and you're figuring out how can I do that, maybe you didn't go to school in ministry, but you moved here, or you're part of our community, and you've never actually done any of that, and you wanna learn how, well, we have Randy Clark's School of Healing and Impartation coming up where that experience alone will transform your life. It'll teach you all those things, but there actually will be an impartation that happens in those services that is different than anything that will be taught. You'll catch something in the spirit for how to walk in this kind of thing. So January, it's coming up. The details are below the dates. So make sure you register for that. You do not want to miss this. Hey, this is like an early warning announcement. One yes. of our premier conferences is coming up February 16th mm -hmm. through the 18th. It's our prophetic conference. Chris will be speaking, yep. Stacey Campbell, Ben Armstrong, Havala. So it's gonna, it's it's always a wonderful yes. time My goodness. as we gather together and equip the saints to prophesy. So plan on being a part of that. We love being part of this house. Yes. Uh, we love our leadership roles here mm -hmm. and especially love working together. Yeah. That's probably the best part of the job. Yeah, a lot of laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but again, thank you for a fabulous year. May the Lord bless you and your family. We look forward to all God has for us in the next year. Amen. Amen, amen. All right. Well, good morning. Good to see you. Glad you showed up. Merry Christmas. Uh, how many of you, uh, you like get your shopping done like October? I, I've met a few like you. you. You amaze me. You scare me a little bit, but you amaze me. How many of you are last minute shoppers? Many more last minute shoppers in this service than the early service. The early service, everybody was like very early shopping. I think it's, there's something about those people. How many of you are last, anybody shop on Christmas Eve? <laughs> I'm a last, I'm a last minute guy usually. So I, I saw a meme that I like this, this week. It said, uh, said if, you, if you're going shopping, treat the, uh, the workers kindly because it's not their fault that you waited till Mary's water broke before you went shopping. <laughs> oh, brother. I just think that's funny. All right. Yes. So another one where they family had another family over for dinner and, and the mother asked uh, one of the children to pray over the meal and the child was all nervous says I don't know what to say she said well just say what you hear your mother say and so she bowed her head and says why on earth did I invite all these people over for dinner <laughs> well 
Oh, goodness. All right. I want, uh, I want you to open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 30. I'm, I want to talk to you about something that I actually talk about f- fairly often through the years. I haven't done it in quite a while, but that's the whole issue of strengthening yourself in the Lord. So just kind of a heads up, we're going to head in that direction. I had a, a real interesting night last night in which I had certain scriptures going through my mind from three o'clock on. And, um, and it, I, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to go into those scriptures, even though it, it kept me active for several hours this morning. Um, there's a theme involved. And uh, it's where it says Mary pondered these things in her heart. And it's the statements that were made concerning what the Lord had spoken about Jesus that had so deeply moved her. And uh, Simeon, uh, Anna, these prophetic people, intercessors, um, made announcements to Mary what would happen to the Christ child and what he was like and what he was there for. And the shepherds did the same thing. And it says this phrase a couple of times in Luke. It says, and she, she, pond- she treasured them, first of all, and then she pondered them. She, she protected them, and then she would bring them out for review, but always in a safe place. If you have some valuable treasure, you don't leave it on the front porch. You, you bring it out with careful examination in a safe place. And that's exactly what she did. She valued what God had said enough to protect it. And the safest place for the word of the Lord is in your heart. Not public examination, not public review, in your heart. The level of anxiety that we lived with reveals how often we subject ourselves to inferior things. The inferior will always raise our level of anxiety, our awareness of potential uh, failures, problems, regrets, all those kinds of things. And uh, so the enemy works hard to to distract us with his word once God's word has been spoken. One of the the kind of awkward things in scripture is that the the word of the Lord actually attracts conflict. And I know that we've studied this through the years, but I I warned you about six or eight months ago, I'm going to do a lot of review over this next period of time. So that's what I'm doing again. But the word of the Lord over your life attracts conflict, and it's important that it does. It's important that it does. Mary's own experience in Luke chapter two, it says that she, she treasured, she took this word that God spoke to her by the shepherds about her son. She treasured them in her heart. And then Simeon came along and said, the words, the thoughts put into words of other people are going to pierce your soul. So here's a word that God gave her, and then the enemy is going to come with his stuff, and he's going to pierce your soul. Why? Because there's always competition for what word we're going to believe. There's always a battle over what is it I'm going to give my life to? What is it I'm going to yield to and give place to? In Matthew 13 is my favorite example of this. It's where we have the parable of the seed and the sower. We have the different kinds of soil represented in that parable. The two things that I want to draw your attention to is first of all, it says the birds of the air came to steal the seed. So number one, the enemy always wants to steal whatever word, seed is word. He wants to steal whatever word was spoken over our lives. Now I, I understand We have the scripture. We have all of the scripture. But the Holy Spirit breathes on this and will highlight certain things to you. Sometimes we'll receive prophetic words. If they're consistent with scripture, pay attention to them. But those prophetic words, the enemy will always try to come and to steal the seed. Why? Because the power is in the seed. Power is not in the soil. The soil is necessary, but the power is in the seed. The power for the manifestation of who Jesus is in the earth is in the power of the seed. I feel faint. (laughs) Did did I disappear or was it you? All right. 
We have musical lights. It's all right. We'll, we'll make it. <clears throat> it's Christmas, you know. I, I don't know what that has to do with it, but it, blinking lights, that's what it is, yeah. Very slowly blinking. <laughs> so number one is that the, that the enemy, the birds of the air, work to steal seed. So any seed that is left in the open, untended. Sometimes God speaks a word and we ignore. Or we'll take care of it later. Receiving the word deeply into our heart is what ensures that word will take root and have impact. So, so number one, the enemy works to steal seed. Secondly, if he can't steal it, he will try to plant his seed next to, uh, to, to God's seed. So we have the weeds. Right? I know this is really complicated. I'm, I'm in the gardening, which is way outside of my uh, area of expertise. I need my wife here. All right. But then finally, I said there's two things. Those are the main two things. But the outcome is that when the enemy plants contrary word or seed, it's to strangle the life out of what God said. Right. Now, let's be honest. God's word has how much power? All power. The devil's word has how much power? Zero authority. Except what I give it. The moment I embrace or consider or meditate on the enemy's seed, his word, his thought, his idea, in that moment, I lend it my authority. So it only has impact in me to the measure I make agreement, right? When you believe a lie, you empower the liar. Believing a lie empowers the liar. Why is this, why is this critical? Because the Lord is working on raising up a family, sons and daughters of God, that know how to steward what he says. All right, so the word of the Lord is all powerful, yes? yes. He spoke the worlds into being, yes. all powerful. The enemy's word is just a contrary idea that has no power except what I give it. If I listen to it, then I've empowered it. The Bible says that tribulation and persecution comes because of the word. Every time you and I hear something that the Lord is declaring over our life, it may be that uh, you're just in, you're in your daily devotion and you're reading through whatever. Let's just say Ephesians chapter four, and he begins to speak to you about the strength of grace that you impart to people around you. And you're reading that, and it just highlights to you, and you have that sense of purpose and identity uh, identity, a sense of responsibility. And he highlights that to you. The enemy will always work to undermine that word so that it doesn't take deep root in us. And he does that by getting us to question what God has said. Perhaps the best example of this, uh, f for me is let's say that, uh, the Lord uh, gives a promise to one of you that you are going to see, um, er you're going to see blind eyes open. And it is going to become the norm for you to see blind eyes open. And then you have a friend with blind eyes and you pray and they don't open. So what do you have now? You have a promise and you have a conflict. What are you going to give your heart to? It's easy to say the promise. <laughs> but when you fasted and you've prayed and the blind eyes are still blind... What are you going to give your heart to? Because the more we use this, well, they're just not opening. I must not have heard from the Lord. What have I just done? I've just empowered the inferior, right? I've just empowered the inferior seed. Why does he allow that? Tribulation, persecution to come because of the word. Because he's a father who gives reward. And if there's no option there can't be a reward. He can freely give gifts, but rewards are based on performance. Based on obedience is a better word. Based on obedience. Does that make any sense at all? All right. 
to five of you. That's, that's all I needed. It's all right. Sorry. All right. So here I want to I want to take you into First um, Samuel chapter thirty, and this is uh, David. David um, has got a bunch of guys with him. They were the rejects of society. They are being mentored and discipled out of stupidity into responsibility. <laughs> They eventually become what's called the mighty men of David, and they were just scary. I, I, don't think, I, I don't think anybody has the nerve to make a movie about the mighty men because it would be too gruesome, um, Old Testament standards, uh, of course. But uh, the mighty men of David actually became this incredible force in the earth on David's behalf. But this is before he's king. He's been anointed king, but he's not king yet. Saul is still in place. And um, David goes and he's been rejected by Saul's household. He's the king. He's been rejected by Israel. Uh, the, the people of God have rejected him. Um, he's been, uh, he now is living among the Philistines. And he uh, does this crazy thing. He's got all these warriors that he's discipling. And he takes them out at night and they go to war with the enemies of Israel. Now he's living with the Philistines. The Philistines think he's going out to war to fight their enemies. But in actuality, he's fighting the enemies of Israel. So they come back in the morning, you know, after fighting all night or whatever they do. I don't know. They kill and plunder and all that glorious stuff. <clears throat> I watched a movie yesterday that was slower than Miss Daisy, driving Miss Daisy. It almost went backwards. <laughs> Random. And, and, and I don't even remember the title. God's healed my memories. And if, and if you love Driving Miss Daisy, bless you, because it was a highly regarded movie, and I don't mean to speak evil against any movie. All right, where was I before I stepped into that hole? So David and his men would go out, and they would plunder the enemies of Israel. Then they would come back, and the Philistine leaders thought they were doing it for them. So one day they want to go out to fight against Israel. David and his guys go along and, and the leaders of the Philistines say, this isn't good because he'll turn on us in the middle of the war and then all the Jews will go, David's our king, David's our king. So there's this big conflict that goes on. So David gets rejected by the Philistines. So he's rejected by Saul, rejected by uh, the Israelites. He's rejected by um, the Philistines. And you've had a bad day when the devil rejects you. So he rejects him. <laughs> They go back to their own town, Ziklag, and when they come to the outskirts of town, they see that there's a fire. And so let's pick it up in verse one. We've got several verses to read, so I hope that you have your Bibles open to 1 Samuel 30. It happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south of Ziklag, attacked Ziklag, burned it with fire, and they had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but they carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city. There it was, burned with fire. Their wives, their sons, their daughters had been taken captive. And then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power or strength to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. That's the hinge of the chapter. Everything changes from this point on. David send, uh, said to Abathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. Abathar brought the ephod to David. David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them without fail and recover all. That last phrase, you will recover all, is the reason I want to talk to you this morning. I have this uh, growing sense that we are given, we are being given an opportunity 
to co-labor with the Lord and to see an actual recovery of everything lost. That coming into this new year is supposed to be a year of recovery. Now, all, some of you have had a tremendous last couple of years. Some have had real hellish and some of you just have coasted along and aren't even certain anything's happened. So we have every, everything and everything in between. But regardless, every one of us live in a world where there's conflict. Every one of us have uh, expectations that we've had fulfilled, expectations that there's been great disappointment in. And I have this, I'm going to call it a prophetic sense a prophetic sense that the Lord wants to invite us in to a moment where we engage with him over a promise. There are times in our lives where the Lord simply speaks to us and he says, he says uh, as, he, as he spoke uh, several times in the Old Testament, uh, stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. And there are moments where you don't do anything. You literally, you're going to mess it up if you do anything. So just be still and watch. And that's kind of what he tells us. He says, just stand by and watch because I'm going to do something for you on your behalf. And yet there are other times where that's not at all what happens. Here, David inquires of the Lord. When did he inquire of the Lord? It was after he strengthened himself. I, I know that God brings us promises when, when we're at our lowest point. I get that. But sometimes the greatest exploits come from a promise we received after we strengthened ourselves. I, I, I'm not sure exactly how to explain this. I hope that there's a, a, a grace available to see this. That there's, there's, it's like um, the Lord is a good steward. And he gives some of his grandest seed, his greatest promise to those who have stewarded their hearts well. And he imparts to them a promise, you will recover all. When did he give that to David? It was only after he strengthened himself. There are, I'm glad that the Lord rescues us. I'm glad that you know, that there's a good percentage of the times in our life where we didn't do anything. He just showed up and turned it around for us. I'm thankful for those. Those teach us about his heart as a father, his compassion, his, his greatness, his grace, his kindness. All those things are revealed in those moments. But he's also a father who wants sons and daughters to go into maturity, to re-manifest what Jesus is like. And that isn't seen in rescue, it's seen in used authority and wow. the demonstration of what God has imparted us to give. Wow. And we've got one of these moments here where it says David strengthened himself in the Lord. It's got, it doesn't tell us what he did. I think if you read through the Psalms, you'll find a lot of what he did. I, 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 have, uh, I, I remember as a, uh, years ago as a young pastor, I'm still a very young pastor, but I was a lot younger pastor back then. Yeah, yeah, sh shut up in the front row. Yeah. I, I remember just having just real, real battles over, over what I was thinking and my, my, uh, my hunger for the Lord was strong, but I was so disappointed and what I ached for and what I saw were worlds apart. And, and that, that tension really, really brought about seasons in my own heart, in my own mind, where I became just very self-critical. And when you become self-critical, you become dangerous because you will love your neighbor as you love yourself. Wow. Wow. Be careful around self-critical people wow. because you may be next. Wow. That's a good word right there. That's, that's a good word. And I remember doing that, and I remember just feeling that internal struggle, and I, I would fight my way to the top again where I could minister life on Sunday, encourage people, love people, but I, I would just get so discouraged and self-critical. And I remember it felt like I was being forced, but in a kind way, being forced into learning tools that he had placed in my life that I knew little to nothing about. Number one, I found that abandonment 
in worship changed me. I don't think there's any other process that we experience in our life where we experience more personal transformation than when we come into his glory, that glorious presence. It is so transformative that we, we, we come in one way, we leave another. I, I don't mean just singing songs, and I, I believe in that. And, and I, I, would, I would, you know, go into the church sanctuary in Weaverville, and I'd turn the music up, and I would worship by myself, or I'd sit at the piano and play, and would, would just enter into real, real sacrifice, real offering. It wasn't, it wasn't done out of convenience. It was done out of necessity. And it wasn't warfare in a sense. It wasn't devil-focused. Right. Worship should never be devil-focused. Right. I don't care... If it destroys the powers of darkness, it still is not the focus. It's, it's, you know, let him destroy the powers of darkness. You just delight in him. And that's, that's really, really the, the engagement there. And so I remember coming and I would, I would sing. I, would, I, I generally had to rejoice before I saw breakthrough. Because it's amazing how easy it is to hang your head and to sing of his worth and to leave unchanged. Because it doesn't take faith to sing of his worth. It takes faith to rejoice, though, because you actually have to believe you're accepted. And I remember doing that, and I, those, that, that thing would break, and I'd come into a place of greater strength again, and, and then I, I would find certain portions of Scripture. You know, when you walk with Jesus, one of the, one of the cool things is that you have, you have history with God in his word. And I have seasons. I can take you to physical locations, I can take you to a place in Weaverville where I walked and I wept and I remember exactly where the Lord spoke to me out of his word and he ministered to me there and it's, it's, it's like that verse is my personal real estate. I own that lot. I'll loan it to you. You can read it. You can celebrate it, but it is mine. And there are certain places like that. There are certain places, I think hopefully all of us have those kinds of places where we just simply feel at home. And so in the times of praise and thanksgiving, uh, something about a grateful heart changes things. It changes the focus, the priority. And, uh, and giving those offerings to the Lord have been huge for me. And it brings strength to me. Another thing has been getting into his word specifically. And I, I will go to, I'll go, for example, for me, I'll go to Joshua chapter one and I'll read verses one through nine over and over again. I'll go to Psalms 25 because I had a real tough situation some years ago and the Lord ministered to me out of the 25th Psalm. And it was life to me. He just, I would just sit there and just tears in my eyes, just reading over and over it again as he would just heal my soul. And so I have history there with God. And it may mean, you know, nothing but another portion of Scripture. And forgive me for making light of that. But it, it may not be as personal for you. But I have, I have time there. I have blood, sweat, and tears, in a sense, over that portion of Scripture. And so I'll go back there. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll go to other, uh, some of the prophets. If, if I know, for example, I was reading in, in Zechariah chapter 9 this morning where the Lord spoke and he says, and I will restore double to you. And I'll take a chapter like that and I'll just wade into that. I'm not studying, I'm praying. I'm engaging with the author of the word. And I read those things and he replenishes my soul. I'm doing what I know to do to strengthen myself. Taking responsibility. See, every one of us, especially anybody who's known Jesus for over a year, you've got to take responsibility for your own strength. Stop waiting for somebody else to make you strong. They will add to your strength, but it's like supplements to a meal. It's not the meal. Take the vitamin C, but drink orange juice too. You know, it's, it's not the meal. It's, the, it's supplements that people provide for us. And so I have found um, that these different places that I have history uh, with God in this book. Another thing that I do in the reading of scripture, and this is what I do uh, very commonly, is I'll just start in a psalm. Because that's a place of healing for me. In the book of Psalms, there's every emotion you can imagine. And so I read until I hear my voice. 
I read until I can find on the page of what I'm reading something I can relate to, something I can identify with. And I, I, re, I may read 20 Psalms. I may sit in one sitting and just read 20, 25 Psalms. I'll just keep reading. But once I find my voice, something begins to activate inside of me. What is it? I believe it's a faith thing. I don't stop and analyze it, but something's coming alive in me where I, I am, I'm becoming restored in my confidence in what God has said over my life. Restored in my confidence in what God has said over my family or over this city or over this, this ministry. Whatever it might be, there's a restoration of, of hope, of promise. There's a refined focus. Yes, this is what the Lord said. I've forgotten that. I allowed all these inferior things to steal my strength and uh, I'm not doing that now. I'm refocusing. And something happens in my soul where there, there's a, it's, it's almost like you've been sitting down waiting for something to happen and you realize, oh, I think I'll just get up. You know, <laughs> that might be what he said when he said, arise, shine. Your light has come. It's already happened. Get up right. and begin to implement what he's already put in our arsenal. Right. And that is this chapter for me. As David strengthened himself in the Lord, but then he went to the Lord. This is probably my, my biggest uh, mistake that I make in, uh, in life is at this point. I know how to strengthen myself pretty good. I know how to radically obey and take risk. The biggest mistake I make is that I assume he wants me to recover all and I didn't ask him. Do I pursue recover all? I don't know if that makes if I made that clear or not. Uh, sometimes I will assume that I know the will of God because it's biblical, but it's not necessarily what He wants me to wants me to give myself to in that moment. Does that make sense? You know, if, if I can use an example, I maybe have worn out, but um, <clears throat> where Paul responds to this great commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And so he says, I'm going to Asia. And God says, no. Yeah, but it's in the book. Can you imagine arguing with God about what's biblical and not biblical? He's, you know, I'm going to Asia. And the Lord says, no. And finally, over time, he has a dream. A man from Mesopotamia calls and, or Macedonia and wants him to come uh, to Macedonia. The point being, sometimes... I know too much about the potential will of God and it drowns out my sensitivity to the particular will of God. And so in this moment, instead of assuming he's to recover all, he says, should I pursue them? And if I pursue them, will I overtake them? That's a good question. There's one place in the Bible where the Lord said to pursue and Israel was defeated. I've been wanting to teach on that one because it's so confusing. I love that. <laughs> I, I love the be bewildering stories. It's true. They said, should we pursue the enemy? God says, go after it. They do and they lose. So they come back the next day and they said, God, do we pursue? And he says, yes, pursue. And they get defeated again. It never explains why. Sometimes we just have to be reduced to our real point of strength. And the third time they said, do we pursue and will we overtake? And he says, yes, pursue and you will overtake. So here's that moment for David. And the Lord speaks and he said, you will recover all. I have a sense, I believe that this promise is for everybody in the room. I think, uh, you know, for the believer, um, every year is the year of Jubilee. You know, so it, we're always in a moment where the Lord is desiring to recover lost things. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. But there are moments where he's breathing on a theme. And when he does, there seems to be, at least in my estimation, such an exponential increase of power in that moment. For example, the Lord can say, this is the day of the harvest of souls. Well, so was yesterday, right? 
But when he says it, suddenly a message that would have got two people saved now gets 50 people saved. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's like when he says it, there's this accelerated activity of God involved in that moment. And while it was true yesterday, it is even more true today. And that's my personal sense about this verse. Pursue and you will recover all. My sense is, is that he's looking for a church family of believers that will stand confidently in the middle of a very unusual season and say, Father, do we pursue? And if we do, will we recover all? And then he says, pursue, for you shall recover all. This story unfolds and they do recover all. Uh, it's an extraordinary thing that none of the uh, children, the wives, none of them were killed. All the possessions were saved. They recovered everything for the glory of God. This passage that I, I was actually sent, a friend of mine sent it to me this week, kind of just a personal promise for me and for our family, out of Zechariah chapter 9, I think it's verse 12, where the Lord says, and I will restore double to you what was taken, what was stolen. We see this in Job's life, that he lost everything. Then the Lord, after he prayed for his friends that were critics of him. After he prayed for his critics, it says the Lord restored twofold. The amazing thing about the restoration of the Lord is that he restores to better than before. He restores to a place better than before. He doesn't restore to the same place. He, um, when he restores, uh, they, they tell me that when a, a bone is broken and it gets healed, that place of the break is actually stronger than the rest of the bone. He, he wrote it into nature that we would know that our creator, our father restores, but he restores to a place of even greater strength. It's the beauty of deep repentance because the person in this room who would have made the biggest mess of their life when God forgives, heals, and restores, that place of greatest weakness becomes the place of great strength, of exemplary strength, strength illustrated through the repentance of that one. And so we're in a season always, but I, I, I just, uh, I anticipate coming into 2022. <laughs> I, I saw somebody say the other day, they said, 2022 is just 2020 with T W O O, two O O. Excuse me, 2020 again. <laughs> bad joke, bad joke. Sorry. So Jesus redeems all. <clears throat> the devil doesn't get any holidays. I don't care what he thinks. He doesn't have claim to any year. It's the day of the Lord, the year of the Lord. <laughs> For the believer, every year is the year of Jubilee. Yeah. For the believer, every day is the Sabbath. And for the believer, every hour is happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I sense. We're going to pray together. Because I, 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 think, I think this one is not one that you will have the opportunity to sit by and watch. I, th I think this one is the invitation to co-labor. This, this requires the yes. This requires the shall I pursue? And if I pursue, will I overtake? And he says, yes. There are some of you who have lost loved ones, family members through this whole crazy pandemic thing. I have a number of friends that, uh, that are in heaven uh, today um, as a result of that disease. I hate disease. And I, I, I remember somebody came here years ago and told us what, whatever you tolerate will dominate. And, uh, and so there has to be this, you don't have to verbalize it all the time, you don't have to be obnoxious, but this internal disgust over what becomes normal. Never pointing a finger. It's not about somebody did it wrong. It's about that I refuse to become okay 
with the disease taking so many citizens of our city, of our nation. I'm not, I'm not okay. I'm not okay with it. And I'm going to smile with you and celebrate the goodness of God. But when I get alone with the Lord, it's time to pray. It's, it's, it's time to get in serious. It wasn't God's idea to destroy people's lives with disease. That's not, it's not him. Jesus, when he went to clarify that issue, he says, the son of man came to give life. That's why I came. I came to give life. So I'm going to invite you. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and stand because we're going to pray. I'm going to invite you into a, uh, I, I guess, I guess a covenant, uh, an agreement with the Father. How many of you can think of at least one thing you would like to see recovered uh, from, from the last couple of years? Yeah. Uh, I mentioned the health thing. Some, uh, some businesses were completely obliterated. And as others of you, you're at, literally your businesses have multiplied. And um, um, not even because you played everything right. The Lord just seemed to breathe on, on that. Uh, somebody mentioned earlier just the blessing of the Lord on investments, those kinds of things. There's a, a number of people in this room who have been biblically waiting for certain things to take place because of promise you've been given because of hope, because of things that you've prayed for that you thought you heard the word of the Lord on, that I believe he wants to bring us into that season of fulfillment. I love praying like this, but I hate creating a lottery mentality in Christians. You know, I don't, I don't like that because it breeds carelessness. Instead, what I want is I want to invite you to just kind of step up to the plate and say, shall I pursue? He says, yes. Will I overtake? He says, you'll overtake and you'll recover all. I want you to be able to hear that in your own soul, in your own spirit, that resonating word that says, yes, you will recover all. Because then I'm going to enlist you in an army. I'm going to enlist you. We have people uh, from the Bethel family all over the world that join us right now. And I'm enlisting all of you to join us in this moment that just says, okay, it is time to recover all. Say that with me. It is time to recover all. Grab a hand of the person next to you. Put a hand on the shoulder. It's some way connect with the people around you. And I want you to uh, sacrificially pray that they would recover all. There's, there's things about everybody's life in this room where we need recovery of stuff that maybe nobody else knows, but he knows. And so I'm gonna ask you right now, pray in a, in a uh, forceful, sacrificial way for the recovery of all for the people around you. Go ahead, lift your voices, let's pray. to recover all, God. Recover all. <clears throat> Thank you, God. All right, you did good. Go ahead and drop hands. I want to pray over you. There's a strange part of the story that I actually, I, I don't remember ever teaching on when I do this, this lesson. And it's when David and his men go out to war, there's a couple hundred of his guys that are so exhausted, they're afraid if they go out to war, they'll just die because they can't function. They're just absolutely exhausted. And so David and his men that are strong enough to go to war, they go to war, the others stay behind, and they watch whatever remains. And after they got the victory and they come back to town, it says the worthless men among David, 
So he still had some worthless, <laughs> not yet delivered uh, followers, disciples. They were in process. Those guys said, all the spoil belongs to the guys that went to war. The guys who stayed behind, they get nothing. And David said, he said, the spoil goes equally to the guys who went to war and the guys who guarded the baggage. Everybody in this room has a role. And some of you may just be guarding baggage because of what you've gone through. I'm here to tell you that's legal. <laughs> just be facing the right direction. I'm, I'm very serious. It's, it's not a time to be careless, but it's a time to recognize, all right, I, I can't do the 40-day fast right now, but I can skip breakfast. In other words, I'm, I'm, I'm going to guard my heart. I'm going to guard my relationships. I'm going, to be, I'm going to protect what I entertain. Sometimes you can be exposed to so many things and it doesn't have any effect. Other times, very, very sensitive. My wife right now cannot watch any, any uh, TV or any. <laughs> we are Hallmark Christmas people right now. <laughs> we, are, we are watching the great mystery of romance. Within five minutes, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> but I watch it anyway. I watch it. But very, very seriously, we are all in different moments and recognizing, okay, normally I could watch a car chase, if I can use a TV example, but not today. Just be aiming the right direction. I am set on not only my recovery, but everyone around me. We recover all. That's right. That's right. And should I gain strength where I can do the 40-day fast or I can engage in the battle, I can get on the streets and minister to the lost, whatever it is, when that comes, I'm there. Yeah. But until then, I'm at least leaning in the right direction. Really yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. All, right. all right. So, Father, I pray that for us as a family. Thank you so much for all who have said yes. I want you to say this with me. I will pursue. I, pursue. I, will, recover all. I will recover all. Father, that is our confession. And I pray that everything that happens in this next season, every measure of breakthrough takes place for your glory. Your glory. I am so thankful you are exalted in the fulfillment of your word. I pray that now in Jesus' name. Amen. One quick question before I... Uh, who's coming up? Dan's coming up. Okay. One quick question before uh, I turn things over to Dan. There's always, uh, every time we come together, there's always a high chance because of the number of people in the room that there would be somebody here who doesn't have a personal relationship with Jesus. You just simply don't know what it is to be born again, to be forgiven, to be a true disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. But yet you, you feel that tugging in your heart where God is literally inviting you to come into the family of God. And if there's anybody here that is in that place and you would say, Bill, I don't want to leave the building until I know that I'm forgiven, that I have found peace with God. I want to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus. If that's anybody in the room, just put a hand up real quickly because I just want to acknowledge you right where you are. Make that agreement that the miracle of salvation will begin in your life today. Put a hand up real fast. If there's anybody online in that place, we've had many people come to Christ watching uh, services online. I invite you, just write in the box. We've got pastors on call there uh, to be able to minister to you. So uh, just do that online. Just say, I want to know Jesus. I want to receive Jesus. All right, so Father, let us be, uh, be a great blessing as a restorative people to our city today in Jesus' name. All right, Dan, go ahead. Minister team, why don't you come on up? Part of our, we have a.
prayer team that's been trained to minister and just to agree with you if you need a miracle in your body or you need agreement in, for some breakthrough in any, uh, any way, shape, or form in your life. So we invite you to come forward for that. So as the ministry team come, is coming, we bless you. And thank you for coming today. And come receive ministry if you'd like to. Remember, there's no service tonight at 6, so hang out with your family and do something cool. Play with your toys. <laughs> Hi, Bethel family. I am sure you're feeling the joy and the weight of that intentional word from the Lord. As Bill was speaking, isn't that the truth that we all feel like the Holy Spirit speaking an individual word straight to our heart? And so I want to chat with you now as our family across the globe. Wouldn't you jump into the chat and let us know what stood out to you? What did you feel like the Holy Spirit highlighted, whether it be a scripture, an illustration, or one of the prophetic declarations Bill shared with us this morning? Jump into the, sh the chat right now and share with us what you sense the Holy Spirit highlight to you. And I'm going to be sharing some of that with you as our family. And as you do that, I'll share from my heart. When Bill was sharing the truth that one of the doctors spoke to him about the human body, that when a bone is broken, when it heals, where the break was, it is even stronger than the rest of the bone, that our physical bodies, the biology, the way the Lord created us is to heal stronger than even our original. And as I think of this Christmas season and breakthroughs and healings that I'm trusting God for, even my own personal journey of, of navigating through fears that I might have or doubts. And I think and stop. And as I sat listening to Pastor Bill, as he shared, I thought, God, th these breakthroughs I'm trusting you for right now, they are not going to take our family out. They are not going to take my friends out. They are not going to take people in our community that I love and care for out. In fact, as we place it in your hands, you are going to take that area of their life. And we know this to be true of God. You're going to make it the place of strength, the place of a anointing. Actually, it's going to be the place they probably will minister out of for the rest of their life as they see God come through. And so that is what I'm trusting and praying over you, our family, right here in Reading and across the globe. We're going to jump into our chat now and just highlight a few of the words that God had spoke to you. Um, I see Chris here saying, that he's praying right now and saying, even in Gwen's heart, let it be so. And he's declaring this over you right now, Gwen, that God would bring radical, radical restoration. I'm seeing here um, that Samuel says that he is going to pursue God and God is going to recover all. That's such a powerful phrase I'm going to use as a prophetic declaration this week too, Chris. And uh, I can see Janelle Kennedy, who's joining us. She always is with us. And she's saying um, she is thanking God for the breakthroughs coming for everyone. We're trusting that with you. And then Chris is saying he ha has a daughter who is trusting God to heal a broken relationship. And with three grandsons, they're claiming this word over their life. We're going to pray right now. Um, it's Chris B-A-G. I don't know how to pronounce it, but we are speaking that right now and joining our hearts with yours. Jesus, we declare restoration over this family that their daughter, every one of their grandsons, their, their children, extended family, God, would experience your grace and your mercy and full restoration, that you would break in in such a way that those relationships are stronger than they were ever in the beginning. God, we declare that you restore better than even our greatest Ephesians 3.20, what we can ask, hope, or imagine. And so we speak that over you right now, Chris, and your family. If you're hearing this and you're even watching the service at a later stage, know that the Lord is no respecter of time or place. And so if you're needing that right now, we are speaking that word into your family line and your spirit right now. I'm seeing um, Craig saying he's struggling with a lung condition and, uh, and, and rapid 
weight loss. Let's just trust God to break into Craig's life. Would you join me right now? You are a ministry team. You are highly anointed ministers by the Holy Spirit. And so let's join together. Chris, we speak right now the healing power of God into your lungs. And we declare that that lung condition would completely dissipate in the name of Jesus. In fact, we speak a creative miracle into your lungs right now, Craig, that you would experience better breathing seven times as fast, that it would be seven times as strong. Your oxygen levels would increase. And we say sevenfold increase in oxygen levels over your body right now, Craig. And Father, I thank you that even over Craig and his family, if this had stolen any special moments from them as a family, would you restore those? Would you begin a a series of blessing over this family relationally, physically? and, uh, And I just pray the spoilings of heaven over you and your family right now, Craig. Um, I want you to know as you are joining us that we have each, as we are on earth, experienced times of disappointment or unexpected moments, specifically around this Christmas season. I even am reminded having Christmases, trusting for us to fall pregnant and us experiencing that delay. And the Lord just put it on my heart. I'm going to end with just standing in agreement with those who are trusting the Lord for children in this season, whether it's an adoption that's been delayed or you are trusting the Lord to physically bear your own children. And as a woman, you're not seeing the fruit of that right now. I'm going to pray that the breakthrough we experience, you saw if you hadn't joined us at the beginning of the service, you can rewind now and see our two beautiful little kiddos. And I am trusting the same breakthrough that Richie and I received breakthrough uh, in a uh, falling pregnant and and our pregnancies that you would experience a Christmas miracle. And we would see 2021 marked with the beginning of that promise coming to fruition. And then you would see that baby in 2022. So Jesus, would you touch every reproductive system right now with your power? Would every single aspect of that reproductive system be moved by heaven right now in Jesus' name. And we declare fruitfulness on God's people. We declare a multiplication in the name of Jesus. And and we speak right now into families who are trusting for children that they would fall pregnant. I, I, I speak that same breakthrough over Richie and I would be your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And Father, we say, we say quick, uh, quick, pregnancies, Father, that people would fall pregnant in, in lightning speed time frames from what they have been expecting or what they have experienced before. And Father, we speak grace over pregnancies right now. And even those who are trusting God for adoptions and they've been delayed, I really had that on my heart. We speak your grace and your speed over adoption processes right now where things have been delayed or, or paperwork has been held up. We say in Jesus' name, would favor be on that paperwork, that it would go into the right hands at the right time. And we even pray for financial blessings, for adoptions to take place, that there would be financial miracles, that those without families would be brought into families and those trusting for children would receive financial miracles to make that happen in Jesus' name. If that's you and you're trusting God and you feel grace to, you can jump into the chat and let us know that that's you. And we're gonna pray over you by name. I want to let you know if you're experiencing any relational turmoil or disappointment right now, that that is something my husband and I have been praying over God's people, that there would be intentional, clear, obvious restoration of relationships in the name of Jesus. And so we speak that over children and parents right now in Jesus' name. We speak that between siblings, that there would be grace and restoration. We speak a spirit of forgiveness to rest on those friendships that have felt broken or long forgotten and that there would be incredible grace that you would experience from God in the area of relational restoration in Jesus' name. 
And, and we always end with this, but it's the most important decision you could ever make if you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I am inviting you right now. You can join us in the chat and just write the word Jesus. Just say Jesus. And we wanna pray as Pastor Bill did give you, uh, and he prayed with you. We wanna give you one more opportunity in this season. If you wanna receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, would you jump in the chat and write Jesus? And, and we are going to pray with you. So if you've done that, I'm gonna pray and invite you to pray after me. Church family, if you're a believer right now, wouldn't you bring to mind the people you're trusting uh, to come into the kingdom of God and to meet Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And we will see a great harvest as we end 2021 and go into 2022. So Jesus, I receive you and I declare you are King of my life. You are the King of kings. Jesus, I declare that you died on the cross for my sickness and my sins, that you have through your power absolved me of my sin. And in the name of Jesus, I receive the gift of salvation, that I'm a son and a daughter of God through the grace of Jesus. And in Jesus' name, I declare that you got the keys of Hades, that you rose again, that you ascended and you're seated at the right hand of the Father. And I declare that the old is gone and the new has come and I receive the gift of Jesus Christ. If you prayed that prayer, let someone you know or let us know in the chat below. And Bethel family, for this Christmas service, we aren't gonna be having our usual discipleship over Zoom, but you can find us continuing with that next Sunday. And we are so excited to hear what the Lord is doing in your families and your life. Um, You can always send through your testimonies or let us know um, through our channels below. You'll see all of those details. We love you, Bethel family. Merry Christmas, and we will see you each Sunday as we move into an exciting, favor-filled new year. We love you so much. Merry Christmas.